Grizz fans, the official Grizzlies mobile app is your key to the game. It's an all-in-one experience updated with even more functionality. You can keep track of a team with news, social media, the schedule, stats, and the standings. And you can log into Grind City Media to watch and listen live to streaming content like The Chris Vernon Show and Rise and Grind. You can check out Grind City Media articles, videos, podcasts, and GCM talent. See what's going on right here at FedEx Forum with our concert and event calendar. Plus, you can find detailed information on seating and concessions with Arena Maps. You can take the app into FedEx Forum as your mobile wallet, use it as your ticket to the game for Grizz Den mobile pickup, and as contact-free payment for arena concessions. The official Grizzlies mobile app, your key to the game. This is the moment you've been waiting for. Due to phenomenal demand, the Backstreet Boys are back. The record-breaking DNA World Tour continues. Brian, Kevin, Howie, Nick, and AJ. Backstreet Boys. FedEx Forum, Friday, September 9th. Get tickets now at LiveNation.com. For more, check BackstreetBoys.com. HBCU Huddle with me, CJ Hurt, and Mike Wallace has all of your HBCU football, sports, and culture needs covered. We discuss the hottest stories weekly across the black college sports landscape, including the SWAC, MEAC, Tennessee State, Lane, Lamorne Owen, and all the black colleges in between. New episodes drop every Thursday, and you can stay connected with the latest stories and discussions about your favorite HBCU by going to grindcitymedia.com, selecting the podcast folder, and clicking on the HBCU Huddle tab. HBCU Huddle is a spot for all your black college sports and culture needs. The Santi Aldama we have moment. To talk about him. The reverse dunk. One of the plays of the year. Oh, without question. He pump fakes, then drives past. And then a reverse? You never see a under the basket reverse. No one does that. Like not Santi Aldama doesn't do it. Who does it? The Chris Vernon Show, live weekdays at noon on grindcitymedia.com or wherever you get your podcast. Welcome to Rise and Grind with Jessica and Megan, live on GrindCityMedia.com. Now, here's your hosts, Jessica Benson and Megan Triplett. Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. It is time to Rise and Grind. Jessica Benson, Megan Triplett, CJ Hurt with you here to wrap up the week. To wrap up last night's very exciting NBA draft. It was a late night. It was a long night. So much activity. Yeah, it's a lot to get to. A lot to talk about from the Grizzlies. We have our guys. We made our picks. And as Zach Kleiman said last night, we got the guys that we wanted. So we'll hear from Zach Kleiman from his press conference that was late, late last night. And we'll also be joined by Lang Whitaker to help us recap all the action from the draft. And it was an exciting night. You know, I watched it up here at FedEx Forum, and it was one of those moments where you're like, man, oh, man. It kind of made you excited for, like, the season's – it really is around the corner now at this point. Like, it really is. Things start to stack up. Mm -hmm. And I feel like any sort of hangover we were having from the NBA Finals, draft night eliminated that right. for me. Like, all of a sudden, I'm watching it play out. You're seeing – New guys coming in. We said goodbye to a player last night, which we'll get into as well. But it just feels like that turning point of the off season, where okay, now the attention really does go to next year. And next mm -hmm. thing you know, it's going to be summer league in, in two weeks, and the off season, and free agency, and then boom, season's going to be here. But it was so exciting. I don't know. Draft night just there's so many emotions that come with it, and seeing all of the reactions, the people who were there, the people who have videos coming out, like finding out around their families. It's just such a, it's a great way to yeah. end the week now, talking about it all. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of great storylines with, with everything last night. Of course, like, we're biased to all the Grizzly storylines because you're sitting there and, like, you're, like, you're waiting and you see, like, you see some guys' dreams and, like, their lives change for certain teams and for certain families. And, um, and then you're, like, I'm just like, okay, 
Grizzlies like to, to get in, when we're closer in the teens. I was like, okay, I'm ready for like the 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 twenties something. And we saw the Grizzlies move up, move up, move up, make some picks. And the Grizzlies were busy last night. That's the best way to, to describe it because like as I was getting kind of like antsy and into my feelings and in my emotions, especially after Jaden Ivey and like getting all that, then I then I got kind of got kind of stagnant. And then all of a sudden, what happens is like here comes the Grizzlies and to try to like recap it all that was like one of those okay like making the circles and that was also when i really wanted i wish i had my graph paper last night because <laughs> i talked that's when i wanted your graph paper too mm-hmm. i was like dang ever since megan talked about graph paper this morning mm-hmm. all i want is to have like the very aesthetically pleasing plotting out graph points plotting out drafts but let's just get fully into it yeah. the biggest thing is like you said for this grizzlies front office they stay consistent yeah uh, any thought that this would be the draft where they don't trade up no, 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 because they did it three times last night, and this is the morning sit brought to you by Grind City Brewing on a Friday. But once again, you're seeing the trend of this Grizzlies front office where, frankly, they don't give a damn where a player is falling in a mock draft. Yeah. If they want him, they're going to move up and mm-hmm. get him. And you saw them do that first last night with the 19th pick. They trade up. They trade their 22nd and 29 picks to the Minnesota Timberwolves, and they get Jake LaRavia out of Wake Forest. So that's pick one of the mm-hmm. night. Yeah. You did. What did you know about Jake LaRavia? Nothing, because, okay, I didn't either. I was sitting there like, Jake LaRavia, let me, let did me you, look this up. Did the up first and let, thing let pop up see. the age thing? Yes, okay, it did. That's the, like, that's hmm. the first thing I learned is that Google thought he was two years older than he yes. really was. And he's actually 20 years old. Yes. He was a, he's, a, he's coming out as a junior, and you're like, oh, my goodness. Like, how did he do all this? He went to Indiana State first and then transferred. Um, this is a guy that, from like, the reports from I watched some of his like high school scouting reports, that this was a guy that a lot, a lot of teams were very, very interested in. And some coaches were surprised where he, where he picked and why he didn't get as many offers. Um, but he, uh, another young one, another young one to add to the Grizz Next Gen lineup. But there's, there's some high reports on Jake LaRavia. He was reportedly to go around 20 to 23 anyway and so he kind of moved up there but the Grizzlies wanted him and they did just that yeah it was so funny to see that thing because apparently the age thing may have been playing a factor Mm -hmm. in him originally being projected as more of like a second round pick and he said once he saw that yes Google had his age wrong and everything had his age wrong he had to shore that up with his agent in the process and whatnot so like shout out to you Jake Laveravia for being 20 years old and making sure no one thinks you're 22 that's relatable I feel like the Grizzlies got a bunch of like relatable guys last night Mm -hmm. and so that starts with that Um, when it comes to the next one as they trade up for the 23rd pick for David Roddy out of Colorado State I actually knew David Roddy just I have a lot of Colorado State friends from who went there from college and then he's the Mountain West player of the year but I hadn't really watched a, a ton of him the only mm-hmm. thing I remembered of him not to bring up like bad things here on the morning after the draft but he missed some free throws against Michigan yeah, CJ I I'm did. sure you remember in the <laughs> NCAA tournament but there was like so much hype around just the Mountain West Conference as a whole having a really strong year and Colorado State being that gem and David Roddy being the best player mm-hmm. in the conference so then I got excited and then I saw that first highlight tape that started and I was like this guy's He's beefy. Yeah. And then I was like, how guy. does he move that way? <laughs> he's a he's a big guy. And like some people said, like he's a center, but he can do so much more than a center as well. And he's someone who played a lot of sports. And uh, he played he played football too. He's a, he's a star yeah. quarterback first. And I was like reading up about like just like interesting facts about him. And he's played basketball, uh, football. He did like disc and he won state and disc or something like that. I'm like, oh, okay, this guy's done so much. And now he's become this like basketball star, this basketball star. But he's a guy that can like, the, the, the clips that they even showed last night, he's a guy that can get to the rim and make you pay a little bit. I saw some like some crazy highlight uh, clips, but it, 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 he is a beefy guy. And that was like the biggest thing. That I think I think that was um, one of the highlights that everyone kept talking about. But I'm excited about him. I did not know him. I will give. I want to give a shout. I don't even know who the, who the fan is, but someone tweeted out because like he follows me. He tweeted out back in February about about him and saying, "Oh, Kleiman should really get this guy." And that was in February. And now here he's like, "I'm like, you must have known something." And like he's a Grizzlies fan. And now here here you are. And this is like not an analyst or anything. Mo on Twitter. So. Congrats to Mo for like knowing something in February that Kleiman should get this guy, and here he is now going to play for Memphis Grizzlies. I do feel like last night was yet another example of the Grizzlies front office. Mm-hmm. They are so 
simpatico with NBA draft Twitter. Like all they do is continue to trade up to take guys that NBA draft Twitter falls in love with. Every mm -hmm. guy, biggest steal in the draft. If the Grizzlies take them, there is a chance that there is someone tweeting about him on Twitter that he is the biggest steal yeah. in the draft. And there were people who said that about Jake LaRavia. There were people who said that about David Roddy last night. And I think this is where you look at like all the moments, and there were so many beautiful ones, but the video that CSU put out of David Roddy getting the call was one of the best, like, mm -hmm. just overwhelming, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening to me moments. Take a look at David Roddy finding out that he was going to be a Memphis Grizzly. Chris. What's up? Okay. Don't play with me, man. Don't play with me. Don't play with me, bro. Don't play with me. I will not let you guys down. Hold on, I gotta get quiet. Sorry, we, we kept our we kept our interest like very quiet. Yeah. This, this was like our plan the whole time. <laughs> Oh my gosh, See, I, you guys sold it well. Cause believe me, I, I had no idea. So, man, thank you guys so much. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to get to work. I can't wait to compete for you guys and compete my heart out and just just be a pro for you guys. I, I can't wait. Great things gonna happen with David Roddy in the Grizzlies uniform. So super excited, my man. Absolutely, man. Thank you guys so much. Absolutely. Well, enjoy the time with the family, the friends, and I uh, can't wait to get you soon. I, you know, so it's probably be in touch to figure out the next steps for you, all right? Yes, sir. Awesome. What? What, bro? <laughs> what? Those moments are always cool to see, especially when, like, you have, like, all your family around and to see that reaction because, like, your life really does change. You put so much work into it. Um, and, like, for, like, all the guys and, like, the reactions that we saw last night. But it was, like, it did feel equally more special to see these guys get really, really super excited to come play for the Grizzlies and to play for such a, such a very, very special team. And as you said, what Grizz fans all want to hear is, like, I'm ready to come work and I'm ready to come make a difference. So congrats to him. I can't wait for him to, like, touch down the city of Memphis and get acclimated. Yeah. And I think, again, hearing from Zach Kleiman himself on that call, mm -hmm. this was our plan all along. Like, we kept it quiet, and David Roddy's like, well, you did a good job. I, I mm -hmm. didn't expect this to happen. Um, but it comes back to, if it's in the plan, they're going to do it. They're going to find a way. They're going to make sure that no one else comes and steals that player before right. they get there. Because, I mean, there's like a natural reaction sometimes of, Grizzlies traded up for who? This person wasn't projected to go this high, but like... They know, and they've had they've had a good track record thus far. So we talked about it like extensively leading up to the draft. All you can do is trust. Mm -hmm. Like that's all you can do in a front office right now. And not every front office has deserved that trust. And there's a lot of fans waking up this morning being like, "Can I really buy into what happened yeah. yesterday?" But it's it's easier in Memphis because of the most recent history. Right, and the, it's it's easier when like you know. I, 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 I get it with fans. Like, there's a lot of t you didn't know what we were gonna do. We had no idea, and um, I know the reports of like, you know, how we got that pick. And when we get to the Zach Kleiman sound, Zach Kleiman could not go in deep into detail just yet when it comes to the trade that we did make with Philadelphia. I know the reports. The reports are that D. Anthony Melton's going. We're getting Danny Green. So Kleiman, when we get to that, cannot could not talk about that. But for for this guy, they, this team really really wanted him, and it's great to see. And for another pick that the Grizzlies traded up to get, how about this? You said it yesterday. How crazy would it be to get the hometown, the hometown team drafts the hometown kid? And congrats to Kenny Chandler. His draft party was just down the street at Hyatt Centric, and it's like super cool to like even get that experience where the team that you're that you're gonna play for was literally just two blocks away from FedEx Forum, and you know the city very very well. And another guy that Zach Kleiman, when we hear from him, he said. We were surprised that he was even available around 38, and like we had been caught making the phone calls trying to get him. And Kennedy Chandler is our was our third pick of the night. Yeah, I was texting a friend, and I said, "Man, like 
I feel so bad for Kennedy Chandler before mm-hmm. he gets picked. Right. Because there were some projections, many mock projections that had him as a first round pick and literally like every member of the local media was invited to his draft party. And uh, when you're watching the draft on ABC Local 24, they're like teasing a live interview with Kennedy Chandler coming up after the draft ends and all of these things and all that momentum and excitement. And it has to feel just a bit of a bummer in the moment. Mm -hmm. But then the fact that he's still around and that the Grizzlies trade up for him and we got the reports that, you know, he was here working out for the team. There's the obvious connection between him and John Morant. Mm -hmm. John Morant has acted as a mentor to him since coming here. Uh, There was the connections out at Briarcrest. There were the connections of the workouts going on early in the pandemic. And it's just, it's really cool to see Kennedy Chandler end up at home and end up with a group of people spearheaded by John Morant who are already so supportive of him being here. And now he says he has a chip on his shoulder. So like you fit right into the Memphis mentality. You're ready to work. And it gives you a backup point guard. He's a rookie. I don't know. Mm. We still don't know what's going to happen when it comes to Tyus Jones and free agency, but that's obviously an area of need for this Grizzlies team. And if Kennedy Chandler can put in the work to to begin making that transition to being the backup point guard for this team, that's huge. Yeah, it is. It's really big. I think the the point guard situation was the was the one that we were all wondering about because when the reports came out that for the Grizzlies to trade up and get that 23rd pick to get um, David Roddy and D'Anthony Melton leaving, you're thinking, okay, you know, the, the, the guards are slowly starting to, like, we don't have that many yet. And then so you see Kennedy, Kennedy Chandler and they have that relationship. And to hear that John Moran made the phone call, like, even, like, that's even cooler. It makes for a special story. We always say, like, full circle moments. And to have that experience with your family, you're going to know the city. It's really, really great because you already have, like, a, already in, like, you already have a fan base here. And not a lot of people can say that they got drafted by, like, your hometown. And so, like, that's going to be a really, really exciting factor. You got, you've already seen John Morant tweet out, like, welcome, can't wait. You know that it's going to be um, loud and crazy. So, the Grizzlies, we got three picks down. Let's now get yeah. to, the, the, to the fourth pick so we can, like, it's a, it's a lot to break down from the draft last night. And I don't even know how we're actually going to break it down as we get ready to hear, get from Lang Whitaker. So for the last pick of the night for the Grizzlies, for 47 overall, the Memphis Grizzlies selected Vince Williams Jr. out of VCU, 21-year-old, another young one, from Toledo, Ohio. He's from um, Toledo? Yes. So. Oh, Jessica, you're from Toledo. I was born. Wait, no, I'm not, this I is so funny. I forget where Jessica is from. No, wait, I wait, didn't wait. even know she was from, born in Toledo. Okay. I, can't, I can't keep up. I only lived in Toledo for like a year and a half, two okay. years. Because my, my dad was at with the Mid-American Conference and it was based uh-huh. in Ohio uh, before we moved to Denver. But my, my neighbor from when we lived in Toledo just texted me and said, you got one of our hometown boys, Vince Williams. He went to the same high school as our kids. My wife is a tutor there. Has a great relationship with him. Toledo <laughs> represent. Oh, good. Perfect. Toledo Holy Toledo. <laughs> That's all I know. I don't know anything about Toledo. Born in the Perrysburg Hospital. That's all we got. People are hot yeah. on him, though. Again, mm-hmm. what did we say? Steal the draft, make. That's true. <laughs> I saw a lot of people coming back with the steal the draft. The one player they didn't have to trade up for, mm-hmm. um, but they get him with that 47th pick. Right, right. So that, that that's where we stand right now for the Grizzlies. Let's now... Take a listen to Zach Kleiman. Here is his part of his press conference, and we'll get to we'll break we broke it up in two parts. We'll get to, to the second part in the nine o'clock hour. But here's Zach Kleiman after we got all of our guys, and here's what he told the media last night. Take a listen. Yeah, so we're very excited coming out of draft night. You know, we'd identified um, you know some guys we really hope to um, you know be able to acquire tonight, and we were able to to go and do that. You know, uh, had to use you know some assets you know along the way to get there, but. Um, as has, you know, kind of been consistent with our plan, I think, in past drafts as well. You know, we're, um, we make it a priority to, you know, figure out who, who do we think is going to be an ideal fit, you know, for our group going forward. And, um, you know, we, we did what we had to do, you know, tonight to go and uh, bring in several guys who were really excited to have join our program. Uh, Zach, so with, with David Roddy, he very unique kind of player, you know, 6'5", 260-pound players. They're not really out there a lot in today's NBA, but it kind of fits that positionless mold that's been trending. Yep. Just what is it about Roddy's game that makes him so unique just beyond those measurements? Yeah, I, I think um, there's some similarities when you look at both David Roddy and, and Jake Laravia, you know, what they could bring to our roster and how they could, you know, kind of open things up, up for us. You know, we think it's, you know, we, we certainly have our, our type of, you know, our mold of player that we generally try to prioritize, you know, going in. 
you know, we want guys who pass, dribble, shoot, defend, who are competitive, who, you know, share the ball, they're unselfish, you know, and shooting is really something we wanted to prioritize with these picks. That, that's kind of what I would, I would highlight on both of these guys, you know, having combo forwards, you know, that's kind of a, a place on our roster where, um, you know, we, we haven't had as much, you know, kind of depth in the past guys who can play and defend both the four and the three. Um, I think uh, from a lineup standpoint, that's going to allow us to do some interesting stuff. I think, you know, if you look at, you know, Laravia, for example, and you can really say the same for Roddy, you know, you could have a, a front court pairing with, um, you know, one of them at the three, Brandon at the four, Jaron at the five, then you're spacing and you've got the gravitational impact of Brandon, you know, rolling, playing above the rim. You know, it allows us, you know, to really have a little bit more of an open, you know, kind of spaced out floor for jaw attacking Des, you know, all of our guys who, you know, are, are handling, trying to create for everyone else. Um, I think the it, it optimizes Brandon Clark, I think, in a unique way, honestly, because of Brandon's versatility defensively to have um, a couple guys in our, our front court, whatever you want to call them, four, three combo forwards, three, four. I think they're very interchangeable, you know, kind of pieces who can, you know, who are really good at shooting. So I think that's going to open things up for us. And that was that was a priority for us. Um, for a team that just came off second round playoff appearance, yeah. you added, it seems like probably three rookies will be on the main roster, yeah. subtracted one um, rotation player, a veteran, and Mountain, two others headed towards free agency. Um, is how do, how do you approach, broadly speaking, headed towards the, the next half of the offseason um, with the expectations of trying to keep a competitive team like you had last year? Are you worried about having too much, too much, too much of a asking too much of, a, of, a, of an increasingly younger team with these rookies, you feel like you need to do something on the veteran side. Yeah, we're, we're looking forward to seeing, you know, what, what, you know, the upcoming weeks could bring in free agency. You know, I, I do think uh, as we've, you know, done with a lot of our prior picks, I think we have mature rookies coming in, you know, guys who are a little bit more experienced and, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say anyone XYZ is definitively in or out or, or playing immediately or things like that, but we feel like we were able to bring in a group that, you know, fits with what we're about is going to help us, you know, move the needle. And we're open minded as to, you know, what we can do to improve the team for the season and beyond as we work through the, the rest of the offseason. Zach, two themes that really seem to stand out. You were speaking about shooting shot, shot selection with yeah. Laravia and Roddy, but also the defensive playmaking with both of those and Kennedy Chandler, just really those two way impact type players. And especially to Chandler with his ability on the perimeter, just the defensive playmaking really seems to be a strong asset of these players to, to really look forward to in the future. Yeah, I, I don't want to lose sight of their defense. I mean, when you talk about, you know, pass, dribble, shoot, defend, you know, defend's a huge part of that. You know, we, we want to surround, you know, our, our entire, <clears throat> entire roster with, you know, with guys who can defend. Um, I think we have a little more versatility, you know, defensively now. Guys, guys who can switch. Um, I, I, Jake Laravia is just an incredibly underrated, you know, I think defender coming in. Um, I, we love the versatility that he brings, the instincts that he has. Um, he's both a good on ball and, you know, a very effective team defender. We even just think he's really good. Um, could say a lot of the same on Roddy. I think we got two very unique players that, um, you know, have skill sets that. If you really look at it and think about, you know, how many players in the NBA have all of those skills for a combo forward, I think it's more rare than than you might think. So um, two guys that I think are really going to help us in a unique way for what, you know, I don't want to say what we've been missing, but I think they're, they'll are they help optimize the players that we have, our, our key guys. Next three will go through Aaron. Obviously, Kennedy staying home is yeah. a good storyline. Um, how did you or, or when and how did you sort of maneuver and know that you wanted to take him? And then um, how did you arrive on the decision to let Ja be the one to call him? <laughs> so we, uh, J Ja, of course, uh, knows Kennedy well. Uh, there's a, a unique, uh, of course, background with Kennedy being here. I think he's uh, d down the street. He had his, his draft party uh, nearby. Uh, we, I, we, we were shocked that Kennedy slipped to where he was. And that was as simple as you know, the, when we got to 38, that, that, that wasn't the first team uh, that we had called trying to see if we could get in, um, you know, using a second, you know, trading in, trying to get a, a point guard who, you know, we feel like fits what we're about, um, you know, is also a very, you know, people will point out, oh, he's, you know, is he a little short for a point guard? He's got a 6'6 wingspan. He takes a lot of pride defending on the ball. His screen navigation is really good. His disruption is really good. He's a really smart team defender as well. So I think Kennedy Chandler is really going to surprise some people. Um, you mentioned with Laravia and Roddy and then even last year with 
uh, Zaire and, and Santi, you've, you've chosen a lot of these three, four, you know, guys trying to hit on that. Curious, do you see that as a spot you need to, you need to improve? And we didn't get to ask you at the breakdown day, but like, what does this imply, if anything, about Dylan Brooks long term, who's entering the last year of a contract? Oh, it definitely does not imply anything about Dylan Brooks. I mean, D Dylan Brooks is a, a, you know, very significant contributor, you know, part of this team. Um, as far as the positions, you know, I think Santi's maybe a little four or five. You know, Zaire's maybe a little more two three, three two, three fours. Like combo forwards are a little bit unique and harder to find, especially ones who are as skilled as as uh, Jake and David, uh, who. We're, we're very excited to be uh, bringing into the program. And I think, you know, we haven't talked about Vince Williams uh, as well, who we got at 47. You know, three, you could probably scale up, scale down. He's got a seven foot wingspan. He's just kind of good at, at everything. Uh, we're, we're excited to get him in the program as well and, and see what he could bring. And that was Zach Kleiman, part of his press conference. We'll hear more from Zach Kleiman from the press conference from last night, Grizzlies GM. And as he mentioned, like they got the guys that he wanted and the biggest thing was shooters. And we got, got just that, you know, when it comes to that, that wing play, it was a really big, big factor for the Memphis Grizzlies. But he said, don't count out the defense. A lot of these guys play some great defense and um, we'll see some of these guys in the summer league. Yeah, wing play, shooters, mm -hmm. every single pick from last night shot above 38% from three. So that's a nice little stat to add to getting excited. Today's all about being the most excited about every pick that you right. could get. So we are going to bring Lang Whitaker into the conversation when we come back. We'll get his take on all of the Grizzlies picks from last night. We'll go a little broader around the draft as well. Stick with us here for more on Rise and Grind. Don't put off getting your oil changed, Memphis. The Grizzlies' official partner. Take five oil changes faster than you think. There's no appointment needed. There isn't even a waiting room. Yep, you heard that correctly. Take five oil changes so fast you don't even have to get out of your car. You can take advantage of Take Five's fast, friendly, and simple service at any of their locations across the Memphis area. And remember, at Take Five, you stay in your car because they're faster than you think. That means you won't even have time to show off your perfect jump shot or your killer crossover. Take Five, the stay in your car 10-minute oil change. Taco Bell has all the classic flavors you're craving. Order them ahead on the Taco Bell app for quick pickup in the drive-thru or get them delivered right to your door. Are you a true Taco Bell fan? Join our team and eat for free, plus score flexible hours, scholarships, and more. Apply at jobs.tacobell.com today. Hours and participation may vary by location. Additional terms and fees may apply. Franchisees are independent operators and are responsible for their own employment practices and benefits. Here's your four grilled cheese double burgers. Enjoy your Sonic. So, could you ever over cheese something? Can you over a cheese? No, over not over cheese. cheese. Over a cheese. Over a cheese. <laughs> what do you get when you combine two cheesy, craveable classics? The Sonic Grilled Cheese Double Burger. Made with three slices of melty American cheese layered between two 100% pure seasoned beef patties and held together by thick Texas toast. Try one half price when you order in the Sonic app. Exclusion supply. See app for details. Limited time only of participating Sonic drive ins. Represent Every Day, presented by Delta Dental of Tennessee, is an incentive-based program focused on keeping youth K-6 through sixth grade engaged in school in order to combat truancy. In partnership with Shelby County Schools and with the help of Delta Dental of Tennessee, the Grizzlies are focused on reducing chronic absenteeism among the most impacted schools in the Mid-South. Students in the program have the opportunity to win fun and unique prizes by going to school every day and being engaged in the classroom. For more information on the program, visit Grizzly com slash community slash education today. Need some barbecue nachos, brisket, ribs, maybe a cheese and sausage plate? The Rendezvous is now open for curbside and carryout. They also deliver through a few of the popular delivery apps. While not much changes in that alley basement, you will see a few small differences and additions. They are open from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday and for the first time ever, they have dessert, key lime pie tart, chocolate chest pie tarts, and so much more. Spend some time downtown and visit our friends at The Rendezvous, a family-owned restaurant in downtown Memphis Alley since 1948. Have you been told that you snore loudly, making choking noises, or gasp for air while sleeping? If so, you may have obstructive sleep apnea. 
One in four adults in the United States has obstructive sleep apnea. If left untreated, it can cause morning headaches, daytime sleepiness, high blood pressure, heart attack, stroke, or diabetes. Call Mid-South Pulmonary and Sleep Specialist PC, the official pulmonary and sleep practice of the Memphis Grizzlies at 901-276-6507. LifeCare Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At LifeCare, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at LifeCareAMB.com. Welcome back to Rising Grind. We've gone deep into the Grizzlies, and it is Friday. And like always, we had to bring Lang Whitaker in to get his take about last night's draft and get his thoughts about the overall picture because we haven't even gotten there just yet. So, Lang, did you have a good What's night up? last night? It was a big night. Yeah, well, we had a Grizz gaming game last night also. We, we won 3-0 nice. uh, in a five-game series, and then that ended, and I flipped over to the draft, and we were like halfway through the first round. So. Mm -hmm. I didn't miss any Grizz right action. On time. Yeah, it was good. I got to like tune in right as like all the wackiness was happening with the trades and the 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 Knicks had just pulled off some trade that nobody really understood, and then the Grizzlies and the T Wolves were talking about things, and so I I kind of tuned in just in time for all that. It was just fun talking about things on a draft I don't, night. I don't as, know. As two teams do. No, it was funny because I kept going. Uh, to the Grizzlies Twitter page just to, to see if anything went through officially official and it really didn't until overnight and then they finally tweet out the graphics this morning. For the longest time it was just the Grizz Gaming score and yeah, I was like, right. oh, all right, Grizz Gaming representing anyone who was driving traffic to the Grizzlies Twitter account last night well, saw Grizz Gaming. So um, congratulations Well, we went to undefeated you all. last night. Hopefully yeah, the Grizzlies, so in, hopefully in retrospect, hopefully the it. Grizzlies draft You're <laughs> right. is when, that successful. When you look at what this Grizzlies front office did and like as you sit here today, like, let's be honest, not all of us watched any <laughs> Wake yeah. Forest games last year. No. Not a lot of Colorado State games, not a lot of VCU games. We'll say Kennedy Chandler in yeah. Tennessee and then having played high school majority of his career at Briarcrest. You've probably seen the most tape on Kennedy Chandler of anyone coming in. But just overall, the front office's uh, continued trend of trading up, getting the guys they like, and kind of the value picks of, of these guys. Well, clearly, like, th there's, there's some sort of algorithm they've figured out, right? <laughs> like, they've got some sort of mathematical formula where they look at all the stats and all this stuff, and they say, all right, this guy can do this, 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 and this. And they plug in all the college stats, and they find the guys they want, and then they go get them. Um, I mean, I think there's something to be said for knowing exactly who you want. I mean, the fact that the Grizzlies have traded up for every pick the last few years means that they know exactly who they want, and they're going to find that guy and go get them. Um, I, I wonder if there's other players who they had in their algorithm who were like uh, – raise their eyebrows a little bit, thought, oh, maybe this guy, that guy, and then maybe those guys got taken a little early. It reminds me of Moneyball a little bit, like the, mm -hmm. the way it worked for the Oakland A's. Um, you know, of course, for, the, for Moneyball to win a title, it took the Red Sox throwing millions of dollars at the algorithm. But still, the A's came up with a formula and a plan that was kind of their own that turned out to be replicable across Major League Baseball. So I wonder if they feel like the Grizzlies sort of have, like, their plan and their thing, you know, Luckily, you already got your stars. You know, I was listening to the radio this morning on the way in, and they were talking about how the Thunder um, have had all these draft picks and amassed all this stuff, and they're starting to get all the players. And they were like, well, you know, now they just got to get the superstars. Like, that's the hardest part of this whole thing is right, getting yeah. the stars. And, and the Grizzlies already have that in Ja and Jaron, Baines playing like that. You know, there's a lot of guys here who are like those star type players. Um, now you're kind of trying to fill in around that and fill in all those other roles. And, and I think the Grizzlies kind of drafted for need, but also drafted guys who clearly they think fit what they're looking for. Right. And it feels good when we hear Zach Kleiman in his press conference say that, as you mentioned, like we did get every, every guy that we wanted. And they were shocked that some guys fell to where they fell and they kind of like worked in their favor. And so if you look at the past and the history of how yeah. Zach Kleiman in this front office has drafted before, they have... Whether we didn't understand it, it has always worked out and it's always surprised us. So as now as you go forward, it's kind of like, you know what, whether or not I haven't watched a lot of film or I haven't heard about this certain player, 
it's still I still sit in a situation where I have faith in this group because sure. every single year it's gotten better and better. And so it's exciting to kind of see what the Grizzlies group will do with this. And as Jessica mentioned earlier, we're just two weeks away from Summer League where we can actually get more film on these guys yeah. and we'll know a little bit more about them. For sure. Like, you know, there's other times where you're a fan of a team uh, and the front office doesn't inspire mm -hmm. a lot of confidence. <laughs> and I think that this front office has clearly shown you can trust them to do the right things. Like pretty much every move they've made has worked um, and done something to serve the greater good for the Grizzlies. Yeah. So when they make trades when they target guys on draft night, uh, you, you feel like it's going to work. Kendrick Perkins said during the draft last night uh, something about how, how good this Grizzlies front office had been. Of course, he said that while the Timberwolves were making a pick. But still, I think his bigger point was correct that this Grizzlies front office, like you said, Megan, ha has done such a good job um, finding their players, trying to get the guys they want, getting them in here, and then showing that they know what they're looking exactly looking for. Um, that I think you, you kind of have to give them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, ignore the Kendrick Perkins player comparisons, but trust everything Kendrick Perkins says. Oh, I the love Chris the comparisons. I was like, I was laughing. They were Desmond all team, over the place. Yeah, Bain seemed to like them. Stuff. Yes, right. Desmond Bain, first team uh, all Twitter beef with Kendrick Perkins at this point this morning. Uh, you're always big on muscle watch. Yeah. So I'm just curious, when you see a guy like David Roddy, 6'6", yeah. 260 pounds, yeah. does this excite you? Well, see... Muscle Watch is really more about uh, heading into the season. Okay. And it's really more about who has added or gained weight over the summer. Okay. And actually, to be fair, Muscle Watch really should begin now because the off season has begun. And now the number is 15 pounds of muscle. That's the magic phrase. Hashtag 15 pounds of muscle. Because every year when training camp starts, some dude shows up on some team, usually multiple teams, mm -hmm. and it'll say, so-and-so has added 15 pounds of muscle in the offseason. And one, one of my friends noticed this like in high school in the newspaper, in the Atlanta newspaper. And we were like, oh, that's funny. Sam. And then the next year, a different player, 15. It's always, it's never 14 pounds. It's never 16, 15. 17, 12, 15 pounds of muscle. Which made me wonder, like, maybe like that's just the amount of muscle you can add over a three-month period. Or... Like, how do we know how much of it's muscle, right? It's just somebody's added 15 yeah. pounds. We'll just say 15 pounds of muscle and make, you know, <laughs> it sounds good. So anyway, Muscle Watch should begin now. And then it became just like once Google search uh, became a Google news search became something we could all have access to. It just became like who's gained or lost weight over the off season. So I think guys though, like David Roddy are going to get in here and the Grizzlies are going to put him on a program and he might not be. 6'6", 270 or whatever, 260, whatever. The one that raised our eyebrows, we were in the Grizz gaming room waiting for our game to start when we had the draft on. And they put up on the screen, Chet Holmgren, yeah. seven feet tall, 195. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, that's not even right either. You know, he does not weigh 195. He can't weigh that much. Like, they, you know, they always add a little bit of height. Mm -hmm. You know, Chet Holmgren's adding five, 10 pounds to his weight too. So That dice like, chain added an additional five pounds. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> are we going to talk about, well, I guess you guys are going to talk about it later on Fashion Friday, the outfits yeah. last night. Yeah. Because yeah. Holmgren's outfit was one thing. I thought... Paolo Bancaro, like dressing like the Riddler, was was the one of my favorite. You didn't like all the rhinestones. You didn't like the purple, the rhinestones. He was he looked like <laughs> was the Riddler from the old Batman. They were just a little the, like too three D in my right. opinion. We'll we'll get into it. Yeah. More, we will. We will. It but, was bright. But since you mentioned Paolo Bancaro, let's talk about the draft overall because he was the number one overall pick yeah. coming Orlando Magic, surprising a lot of people going yeah. into the day. You know, Woj had reported that it was set in stone that it was going to be in this in this particular order and Orlando Magic come out and say and Paolo Bancaro and he even said he was like he didn't have time to really even think about it when he got the phone call because the reports have said what it said um some, some reports that he didn't even like really have like an official official workout with the Orlando Magic but yeah. how about the Magic surprising us and here we get a Duke player adding on to the list of the number one overall picks that we have here. Yeah, there are four Duke players in the first round. Thank I think goodness taking... we got the Coach K appearance. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know how I would have survived without that. <laughs> I sent some, uh, sent some sarcasm in your voice, Jessica. <laughs> it was uh, like, come on, man. <laughs> well, there was a bunch of coaches that showed up I know, last Bill night. Self was yeah, there. Bill Self. Yeah, Bill Self. The the Baylor coach came on there, like mm -hmm. shot out of a cannon on the draft, and he yes, showed up. He was. I was like, wow, man, this guy's having a good excited. night. Um, I don't know. I, you know, I, I think Pankaro seems like a great player, but that Orlando team, like they, they're, they're, I feel like they're not quite yet where the Magic, I mean, the uh, the Thunder are, where we talked about the Thunder just need those superstars. Like 
the Magic are still trying to kind of like build their base, it feels like. You know, they have Cole Anthony. You can add Ben Caro to it. Suggs has been good. Then you've got like all these big guys that you don't really know what to do with, like Jonathan Isaac and Mo Bamba and these other guys. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I don't really know how he fits in there. There's a lot of young guys, but I don't really feel like they have a system or a sort of an overarching plan to encapsulate all that stuff. He might be a great player, might fit in well. There's also a long history of Duke guys getting drafted and not really being that superstar you were kind of hoping they would become. So I don't know. I, 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 I guess the Magic know what they're doing. I don't know. I, my, I thought Jabari Smith's going to be the best player in this draft, but mm-hmm. could be wrong. I will say for, for Paolo Bencaro, it was, re- it was really nice to see. Like He had Mike Miller, his agent, and that was cool a moment to, like, yeah. for Mike Miller to have the number one draft pick. He's there. Give him a hug. And then also Paolo, Paolo Bencaro to hug his mom, who played in the WNBA. We have a lot of WNBA storylines uh, yeah. last night. It was really, really cool because he even, he even credited his mom for the love of basketball that he did, that he did have you know, growing up in Seattle. And so full circle moment for him and his family and re- whether or not we didn't expect it and think it. And I hated the shots of Jabari Smith. I think he was expecting it too. It yeah. was like, hey, where am I going to go? Because that's where all the talks were. Like, I'm going to be the number one draft pick. Yeah. And yeah. then OKC like stays firm with Chet mm-hmm. and then now Jabari is in Houston. And I actually think because when you look at the Rockets draft, you can talk yourself into mm-hmm. saying, oh, the Rockets were a, a winner in the draft yeah. last night. And then you go back to the Van Carroll piece of the conversation and you're like, would the Rockets have actually been a better place for him? Because the magic, like you said, it just seems, yeah. I'll believe it when I see it kind of thing. Meanwhile, the Rockets are slowly putting these pieces together where you're like, oh, they could be an intriguingly fun young team with who they got. I they th- ended up with Ty Ty too, Tari yeah. Eason. I think the thing with the Rockets also is like, there's no expectations right now. You know, like, like Orlando's kind of been in this like upside down for a while now where you're kind of like, all right, we got to get that. We got to get it moving here at some point. That's got a hold. Yeah. And so I think if you're the Rockets, like you're still a couple years away from, from anyone expecting much out of you. So if you're, if you're a Jabari Smith, you can go there and you know, it's, it's almost like when KD first got in the league and went to, to the supersonics, I guess. And they had a couple years where they were kind of figuring it out and getting their things together and getting going. And I think the Rockets are kind of still at that point. And, you know, Jabari's going to take some time to, to become whatever he's becomes. It, it's pretty wild to see the comparisons for him go from, oh, he's going to be like Kevin Durant to he's going to be like Rashard Lewis, who was a great player and had a long career, but was clearly not Kevin Durant mm-hmm. level Two player. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I, I don't really know where he lands. If he's somewhere in between there, great. Even if he lands at Rashard Lewis, great. Like, that, you know, he had a long career and went to the NBA Finals with the Magic. But I, I don't know if exactly where – you're going to fall on, on Jabari Smith. I, I just thought from everything I saw of him in college and everywhere else, like to me, he, he looks like he's going to translate right away. Um, also, Paolo Bancaro is a sweater. We he should talk about that. Yeah. We, we that still haven't got an head. update on We still just feel like we haven't, we had that report and no one ever said what the Duke scientist revealed or how he got through that or around that. That he supposedly was losing like nine pounds right. a game of sweat. That's a muscle watch, right? <laughs> sweat watch. It's true. You should start watching that. You should start calculating that. We'll, we we'll put you on it. Right? A, a like, when dive. you brought it back up on the show last week, I tried to go find anything about yeah. it. And there's just nothing, nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> Hyperhidrosis, I believe it was called. Yeah. Just like maybe uh, someone to, today, when, when Paula gets to Orlando, maybe someone will ask him about that. I'm just like, hey, what is sweating happened? situation? He's in a good place if he's a sweater, he's man. In Florida, Orlando, like, <laughs> he could grieve. Like Houston, he not much better. Or it so. might not work out. I don't know. But we'll, yeah, uh, I don't we'll, know. We'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. Now, the moment of the night that I think I feel like a lot of people said last night. We knew we were watching all four. We were yeah. waiting for Jaden Ivey to get selected. He yeah. goes fifth overall. Some people thought he was going to go to Sacramento. We know the drama with he didn't work out for Sacramento, and he said that you know that's probably not wouldn't be the worst place to go. And for Sacramento, they've made some questionable picks before. I'm here for him to go behind Sacramento because if you look at the history of how Sacramento is picked, the player that they always pick after always has a very successful Damian Lillard, Luka Doncic, and you also have Clay Thompson. So Jaden Ivey goes to Detroit. It's a Detroit family experience. But to see Jaden Ivey and Neil Ivey have that moment, we know Neil Ivey, she was assistant coach here for the Grizzlies, yeah. but to have that moment, it was very, very emotional. And I just like, my heart was just about to explode watching that. Oh, especially the interview with Monica McNutt. Did mm-hmm. you see that? And, and he couldn't talk. He no. was like just in tears. He had to get a haircut for, for that situation with the braids over his face because he sort of hide the tears a little bit. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I, w- I was like you guys. I was just like, wow, that, that was an amazing moment. It, his mom was very composed. I know. She I did a great job holding that. it together. <laughs> I would have been in tears too if I was if I was her. Um, 
She's my best dress of the night. I got, we were to all the players. Yeah. She's my best dress. We, we predicted it that she was going to wear a pantsuit, and she wore a pantsuit, and she looked great. She didn't need like rhinestones dangling oh, she off had the one. whole thing. Yeah. No, 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 I'm saying chain like a thousand of them all over no, no, no. It was the way it should be Subtle. done. Yeah. Subtle. We've got it. I love that she continues on. We're like just following him around to, to see him on the stage. It was almost like the, you're doing great, sweetie yes. moment. Like, I'm here. I'm going to capture this. But it's one of those things. And we talked about it yesterday and they talked about it on the broadcast. But, you know, it means something for, for every single player who gets drafted, obviously. But when you have so much basketball in the family and the history of it all yeah. and her still, there she is, and her still being, you know, now the head coach at Notre Dame. And it just means more for lack of a yeah. better phrase and to see the emotions from both of them it was just so special they're now just the uh the second mother-son duo in history to have been drafted by the nba and the wnba and i think that's such a cool trend that we could continue to see more of and detroit's right. in the family she played yeah. for the detroit shock their grand his grandfather played for the detroit lions and detroit pistons said that they wanted him they wanted to yeah. bring him back and he even said i i've been there before i know the city very well and so it's kind of like a full family circle moment it's a, it's i think it's a good fit just personnel wise too with the pistons and you know they get jalen duran they uh, cleared out a bunch of money so you would assume they're going to make a run at um deandre ayton um yeah Cade cunningham's there they got a lot of like really good exciting young players uh, and i think like it's sort of like uh, houston in that sense there's also like very low expectations right now for that team so they've got time to kind of put it together and figure out how it works um, I, the tears and stuff, like, you know, like as someone who played sports in high school and like, like you, you guys have played sports, like you realize like, like the one thing like no one sees in those moments is like how much work you did. Mm -hmm. Like that's what one shining moment to me every year, the NCAA tournament. Like that's the one part that gets me about that every year is the same thing is like, like it really is like so much work. Like you've been working your whole life to get to that moment. And if you're Jaden Ivey, like, boom, it happened. Yeah. You know, like the one thing you've been dreaming about forever that having a mom who played having a family that was into sports whatever like all that's great but like you're not gonna get drafted by the nba if you're not a great basketball player and if you don't work and clearly he put in all that work and you know he got to have his moment last night so mm -hmm. shout out him yeah i think if you had to pick another team in the association and it helps that they're in the east but like memphis can get behind detroit right now yeah. because yeah. you have Jaden and ivy and as you mentioned now you have Jalen Duran as well. And Jalen Duran had quite the draft night. And if yeah. anybody encapsulates how chaotic it can be to watch the NBA draft broadcast while also following it on Twitter and trying to figure out what the heck is happening, Jalen Duran's perfect because he was on like three teams in five minutes and you really had no idea where he was landing. You even had Woj and Shams tweeting different locations. Both ended up being involved because it was a three team trade. But first, you get Charlotte drafting. Jalen Duran, and you're like, oh my God, Jalen Duran and LaMelo Ball. I can envision the highlights already. This is going to be so fun. And then it's like, no, it's not because the Hornets have traded Jalen Duran to the Knicks, or have they traded Jalen Duran to the Pistons? And ultimately, he ends up with the Pistons. The Knicks got. Well, yeah. we'll get I don't know what the Knicks did, honestly. I'm still confused by what happened exactly. But. You would think that, like, you know, it's 2022. Like, there's got to be some way to make the NBA draft. Thank you. A little bit more like. <laughs> understandable yes. for viewers than Please. this because it's like you know the gif that goes around and i say the hard g but you know the gif that goes around on twitter of uh, i think it's from always sunny in philadelphia and it's the guy with like with the the board mm -hmm. with like the yes. lines and he's trying to like solve that's what watching the draft is like in some ways because you're watching the telecast and then you have to monitor twitter right. also because there's other things that don't get mentioned on the telecast i think last night there was actually two telecasts right there was yeah. something on and abc and espn yes. like it was like there's a lot going on and like like somebody needs to maybe this is a grand city media content idea hashtag content but like maybe somebody just needs to do an nba draft where you like streamline all that stuff into one and you're just like all right here here's what's happening yeah here's how you explain the it. simple here's draft a, here's, like, here's like a simple like yeah. breakdown of right. it. you can watch that one but for the for the ones who like need some, just like some some simpler words well then you get adam you silver get, coming up right? half an hour later announcing trades yeah said, and you're like all right did we not do we not already hear about this and we got to see guys wear the wrong hats walking across the stage like <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of confusion that is hats. something i would like to fix especially when you know that the team is picking for another team yeah. and yes. you see and i know this has been like we've, we've seen this before but at some point it would be great to see a guy get the right hat especially when you already know it's different yeah. when it happens like later on like 10 minutes later well, seeing like what walker before who's the guy the timberwolves drafted walker, walker kessler, kessler who come out in the, in the grizzlies hat and everything and, you know and, and like look that's the photo he's gonna have the rest of his life on stage with adam silver wearing the wrong hat and you i know? think it was 
it might have been Ty Ty Washington, but who ended up with the Rockets, but he was in his interview, and this is no fault of Monica McNutt crushed it last night, by mm -hmm. the way, but you're talking about Memphis, and he's like, I can't wait to go play with Ja and Jared, and you're like, yeah. no, you're not playing with them. Uh -huh. Like, don't get your hopes up in this moment. You have another and Also, like, how bet. crazy is that these guys are wearing, like, $5,000 suits, and it's a $10 hat $10 that screws up the whole look. You can go get you know, from Liz. <laughs> forever. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was interesting because we, we turned the channel. We started on ESPN and watching Malika Andrews and that crew do yeah. it. And then we were like, oh, maybe, maybe on ABC, Woj is talking about, you know, the trades mm -hmm. as they happen. No, yeah. nothing. And it's just so bizarre to see a pick come in 10 minutes before. And then, you know, the whole Jalen Duran, Knicks, Pistons, Hornets debacle is, is the perfect example of it because you never really got the full situation. And I know he's working at the same time and trying to figure out the details himself, but you have such an asset. And the fact that you can't use that to make it a more comprehensive broadcast in the fine year that is 2022 yeah. just makes no sense. It really is. A, it's like. Like, if you're working the draft, it's like trying to put together a puzzle mm -hmm. on the fly, mm -hmm. blindfolded. I remember one year there was a trade that I had heard about. This is like late, mm -hmm. this must have been like 2009 or 10 draft. I had heard like half of a trade, and an agent had texted me and was like, oh, this guy's going to this place. And, but I couldn't figure out the rest of the thing. And, and then I was talking to, uh, to David Aldridge, actually, and he was like, he knew the other part of it. And so we figured it out together <laughs> and like compared notes and figured out. But like, if you're Woj and, or Shams, and you got all these people texting you and you're figuring out this and that, like, I get how it's confusing, but it, it doesn't make it any easier for us at home watching no. the thing. Like you almost have to be on Twitter to figure out what's happening on that draft. If you just watch it as it's presented on TV, like it's it's very misleading mm -hmm. and completely wrong in a lot of ways from from what it ends up being. Now, like I want to get your take on something else because you know the the Grizzlies had to trade up to get that twenty third pick uh, trade yeah. with Philadelphia, and reports are saying that D'Anthony Melton is yeah. going to head to Philadelphia. Danny Green had it, and we'll see what happens with Danny Green his contract. Um, but for D'Anthony Melton, can we just have a moment just like to talk about how like. Mr. Do Something, and Mr. we Do have something. loved him here, and like just what he brought to this group, and he's he's always amazing, and he's always great. Yeah. He, he he always comes in when, when we do our pre wines. He's always that person who's always out yep. there working out before the game during pregame. But for what he's brought to this group, and we saw Jaw tweet out a lot about like he's my brother for life, but like he really did represent Memphis very well through, throughout his time here. Yeah, I think like if you follow his the arc of his career thus far, it's it's very representative of the city and, mm -hmm. and the, this franchise because when we traded for him uh, like I don't think he'd even played in the NBA he'd been injured he had had a back thing that was like a problem and people were like oh you know this is going to be a lingering thing and he got he here for and, a bad Phoenix Suns yeah too. he got here and he and he got healthy and he, he missed the beginning of the, his time here because he was getting healthy and all that stuff and then after that he he was good and and he like kind of like came out of nowhere no one really knew a lot about him like his college career wasn't very it was usc he didn't play a lot like didn't play a long time it was no a one, tough period of time yeah at USC. yeah nobody well you say it's been a long tough period at you usc could. Some could. um but <laughs> <laughs> but melt once he got here like he he really established himself as this guy who, who was a, a a gritty player for lack of a better term and worked hard mr do something he would come in and just make things happen on yeah. all different angles um i think he's going to be a good fit in, in philly uh, if the if the reports we've heard are right like just the way that he plays and his skill set you know and, and the, the fans there are going to sort of like memphis fans they value hard work mm -hmm. and, and that's what mel brings night after night and i found that i was looking on my phone i found the picture of him giving you and me the bunny ears mm -hmm. during one of the pregame <laughs> things last night so I, I posted that but it was it was uh it's a little bittersweet to it see was. mel go that's the part of the business side yeah. of it that just like ugh, it hits and yes i love d'anthony melton because he went to usc but like you said, Megan, I mean, he just, the smile, the energy, microwave melt, what he did defensively, and I know things in terms of, like, recency bias and, and some of the playoff struggles that he had made yeah. it hard to, for some fans especially, to be like, ah, oh, yes, let's keep DeAnthony Melton forever and, and ride this wave. But when you think about the little things along the way and, and what he could potentially be for the Sixers, I have a lot of Sixers friends who were texting me last night, like, ooh, what do you think about DeAnthony Melton? And I was like, you got a great, a great dude and a yeah. great defensive player and if you can throw him into that mix with like thigh bowl and all of the just deflections and defensive mm -hmm. energy that they can bring together it's a, it's exciting next chapter for D'Anthony yeah, yeah. Melton but I also someone uh, 
because I talked about a smile in a tweet, and someone said, oh, well, good thing Philly is where smiles go to die. And oh, I was like, geez. dang. That's, I, Philly's that's trying to tough <laughs> scene. If the report's are right, Philly's trying to make a lot of various things yeah. that we could probably wait and see, yeah. and like where Matisse, Matisse Seibel might end up going somewhere else as well, if, if, if it works out to, to, to their way. And when you have the draft last night, and we knew that trades would happen, and now we get ready for free agency, um, but the conversation before the draft around the NBA was Kyrie Irving. He has taken over the yeah. conversation throughout the week. And yesterday, to hear Woj report that Kyrie Irving has a list of teams that he has said that he is, if they doesn't figure out, if him and the Nets can't figure out one an agreement, a list of teams that he would be in, in, interested in a sign-in trade. Like Lakers, Clippers, Knicks, Heat, Mavs, and the 76ers. The Sixers is the one that like stood out like blaringly to me. I'm like, is that not... Not that's not very nice because of everything that happened with James Harden, James Harden. Nice. Like I mean, like to put them on the list if this is true. Well, look, I mean, this th- is true. It's just a list of the best teams in the NBA. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's all it is. It was like that is well. I want to win a championship. My that's right. That's okay, right. Okay. Well, it's a list of the best teams in the NBA and the Knicks. And uh, minus <laughs> Memphis. He forgot to put Memphis. I on forgot there. to put yeah. Memphis on there. Yeah. Thankfully, the Knicks um, piece of it is so weird. <laughs> Thankfully. We don't, Thankfully. Yeah. We don't, we don't need that energy. Nah. The Kevin Durant side of the thing. So that would like, be please, nice. Keep yeah. all doors open at any yeah. time. Goodness. Kevin. Shout out KD. It's, yeah, shout out yeah, big, big KD I, fan yeah, here. I mean, the, the earth ain't flat in Memphis. So I, I think we're good without Kyrie. Very hilly. Well, the, very hilly. the interesting factor is this. There's is, bluffs. The interesting thing about this is, is what could very well happen if they can't come up with a with great number. And Woj reported that it's not as if the, the Nets aren't giving him an offer. They have offered him. They know that yeah. he is worth something. Is it worth the the max deal that 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 Kyrie thinks that he deserves, and if he does choose to walk away, he's leaving a lot of money on the table. Yeah. And then, how does that affect Kevin Durant? As reports say, Kevin Durant is monitoring the situation, and however it plays out, it might affect if he's asked for a trade or not. Kevin Durant released a podcast this morning, and on the podcast, he did say that he is not getting involved in it. it regardless of what happens, him and Kyrie will still be friends. You know, he, it's his livelihood that this is what affects, and so. He's going to let Kyrie play it out himself. But to hear Kevin Durant say that, you know, especially when, like, you kind of did put – you guys put everything on the line for the situation. And now you're looking at – even for Brooklyn, if Kyrie decides to go and they don't come to an agreement, how – if you're Kevin Durant, he's gone, right? It has to be. Because, like, that makes you feel a certain way. If like, Kyrie's dude, gone, you mean? If Kyrie's gone, yeah. what happens to Kevin Durant? Because, like, that's the biggest well, thing. Well, the other thing was that – and what was put in that tweet is like Kyrie can't go to any of those places without those teams helping the Nets Mm -hmm. get him Mm -hmm. so you get something back so if you're Kevin Durant maybe you believe in the front office maybe you believe in Sean Marks and Steve Nash and you're like you know what like I've I've still got Ben Simmons we've got some draft picks coming in from Kyrie or from whatever this deal is we got some young I assume you're going to get a young player or two back you know maybe you think all right, can make this thing work look he played without Kyrie more than he played with Kyrie since he's been in Brooklyn. You know, mm-hmm. like he, he's used to playing without <laughs> Kyrie at this point. I would assume, and and like Ben Simmons has had his own set of issues. But if I'm Kevin Durant, I would assume like I I know how to play without Kyrie. I, I just want someone who's going to play every night. I just he want someone who's going to be here. Yeah, who who can who can do it? Who I, barring unforeseen sir like. Or let's say seen circumstances like yeah. you want to know why a player if there's an injury or whatnot but just not the chaos that comes with Kyrie will he won't he on any given night that's why I am all in now I don't want Kyrie to go to the Lakers I want Kyrie to go to the Knicks so badly just because I think it's interesting and to keep him in the market no. and everything that the Knicks are doing last night and is it like all I don't think it's a smoke screen I think they legitimately are pushing all their chips for Jalen Brunson which is also an interesting decision on their yeah. part and to it, we didn't touch on it in the Jalen Duran piece but Kemba Walker goes to Detroit and then all of the mix and mingling and pick swapping there with the Knicks and ultimately setting themselves up for a chance to go all in to get Jalen Brunson in free agency or Kyrie I love it if you uh, want drama, just are we not over the drama? Of, uh, I imagine am. Tibbs I'm and Kyrie Irving for a season. Oh, I am over it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over. I'm, I'm over the Kyrie I'm, drama. I'm done. Like, that's just I'm good. like, yeah. So put it in, Go. put it in New York. Oh, I mean, Tibbs gosh. would bench Kyrie because he doesn't play defense. Like it that's that, 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 that's Tibbs. And then you get that story. Also, the, I mean, the Knicks basically last night undid everything they did last summer. It was wild. <laughs> they, like, all the signings, everything they had done, they done were busy out. So I. Look, I, I, the Kyrie thing is whatever. Like he, he's whatever. a great player when he plays, whatever. but like, is he gonna play? Like, who knows? Like, if, I, if I'm Kevin Durant, I don't want the drama. Yeah. Like, 
maybe maybe he's fine with it i don't know maybe kevin's like oh, cool yeah. you know i can deal with this but if it's me like man like you, you just want some certainty and like life gives you enough curveballs and True. weird things to happen like i just want to know what's happening today mm -hmm. so if, if i'm kevin durant if i'm the nets like i i figure out a way to do that I, by the way i thought Kyrie was part of the uh the ownership group there with the brooklyn nets didn't he say that in his post season mm -hmm. interview like he was like well i'm gonna sit down and i'm gonna figure out so there shouldn't really be an issue then. Oh, goodness. The, the drama will continue in Brooklyn. We'll continue to monitor it as free agents. It will be a very, very wild one. Uh, before before we get uh, move on from draft talk, some other WNBA connections. We also had Mark Williams get drafted last night. Elizabeth Williams, his sister, um, went to Duke. They both went to Duke. They both got drafted and from the WNBA to the NBA. And uh, outside of the draft, after the draft, some moves that was kind of cool to hear is that Scottie Pippen Jr. signed a two-way contract to play with the Los Angeles Lakers. And Sharif O'Neal, yeah. Shaq, son, will play in summer league for the Los Angeles Lakers. So it's going to be really cool to see a son in a Lakers jersey. And, uh, you know, Scotty Pippen Jr., Scotty Pippen lives in L.A. So the whole, they'll have that whole, like, you know, yeah. father-son connection out in Los Angeles. I did, makes sense. I did learn on Twitter last night that Scotty Pippen Jr.'s name is spelled different than Scotty Pippen Sr. The Scott, Scotty... Yeah. Seniors, S C O T T I E. Mm -hmm. Scotty Jr. is S C O T T Y. Oh. But, but the reason for that is because Scotty Pippen Sr.'s name is actually spelled with a Y and it's just been misspelled publicly all these years with an IE. And so people just kind of run with it. But his, da his actual name is S C O T T Y Pippen. The senior. more you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The so, more you know. Learn something. Well, that's it. But that that just like everything else with the draft, you have to do like research and like find multiple sources and mm -hmm. match news and like that's how I found that out. I learned that Jalen is one of the most popular names yeah. and continues to be. And the the funniest part is the Thunder getting both Jalen Williams. Can you imagine working for a team and having two players with the same names, even though really they spell Jalen differently? That's like not to bring back an, an old Grizzlies conversation, but the old but how, the, what? Brooks <laughs> debate, uh. <laughs> debacle. But that's you have two players. Confusing. I was I actually thinking older different. than that, Jason Williams, because there was two Jason Williams in the NBA for a while, oh. and when Duke Jason Williams. He was Jason Williams in college, and when he went to the draft that year, they made a very concerted effort to rebrand him as Jay Williams. Mm -hmm. and his agent, Bill Duffy, at the time was like, they were very like upfront. Like, I was at Slam, they were, they were like asking us to please call him Jay Williams from now mm -hmm. on because they knew like there's two Jason Williams. They're yeah. both point guards. Yeah. Like, it's a little confusing. Well, Thunder's so. going to have to do that. It's different when you're on the same well, team. Well, one of the Jalen Williams is J A Y. Yeah, right. the Arkansas so maybe, one. Maybe he could be Jay Williams. I don't know. Yeah, Arkansas, Will Arkansas Williams and Santa Clara Williams. You're just yeah. gonna have to say where they went and go from there. I wanted to ask you one more thing, and I know we've talked about the draft a lot, but yeah. when it comes to like the G League Ignite, because that was another thing that stood out yeah. last night, watching the continued success rate of G League Ignite, and, and one of my favorite draft stories is the Marjan Bochamp story, yeah. and shout out Yakima Valley College, go Yaks, but the journey that he took to get to the NBA and see it pay off for him, he goes to the Bucks last night, but now you've had multiple years of success success rate where there's a lottery pick out of G League Ignite. How important do you think it is for the NIL to exist? And like, thank goodness it does. Do you yeah. think it's going to be a continued trend or will it kind of even up the battlefield? I don't, the one thing that the G League Ignite question mark that I have with that is like, can you get five, six first round guys off of that team? Like, is do you have the opportunity to play that much, to showcase that much if you go to that team? Like, uh, you know, I, I mean, I guess Duke had four first rounders too. But if you go to a college team, you know, maybe you have a little bit more opportunity to showcase yourself. If you're a Jabari Smith and you go to Auburn, like you can be a bigger part of things there or Chet Holmgren at Gonzaga or, you know, I, I just don't know if like, I, I don't think you could have more than one G League team like that where you have seven, eight, nine prospects like that. But I also just wonder if some of those kids are going to be like, you know what, I could make some money in college not as much as the g league maybe but i can make something and i can showcase myself a little bit better and maybe help my draft status a little bit i also don't know if it matters that much at this point like is there a big difference between being the 12th pick and the 19th pick you know what i mean like i, I just don't know if it's that big of a thing and maybe the g league night like we're gonna see these guys keep coming through and like setting themselves up in, in the same fashion um i, I think it's just gonna be more attractive to to these prospects hmm. on their way up 
We'll wait and see. And Summer League, we said, Summer League's around the corner, so we'll see how all these guys uh, fit into their groups. And the biggest thing is for the Grizzlies that we, we got our guys and can't wait to hear more from that. Um, we'll hear more from a lot of our picks probably will be coming to Memphis later this afternoon, so we'll have more on Monday. But we got to take a quick break. Lang, we appreciate We're not going to talk about always. Arch Manning, that little scoundrel. <laughs> that scoundrel. <laughs> you're, you're mad, huh? <laughs> No, you're I'm, not, not, I'm not. You're not mad. You're good. Hey, if you want to yeah, go to a yeah. five-win team, go for it, bro. Like, have fun. <laughs> have fun. They need him. Hook them horns. <laughs> they need that excitement. Yes, yes. All right, we're gonna hit some more off the grind news, and when we come back, we'll hear more from Zach Kleiman from last night, and he'll talk about summer league and who we can expect to see out there for the Grizzlies group. We'll be right back. Don't miss a minute of Grizzlies basketball down the stretch with Bally Sports Southeast. Watch on UVerse channel 1727, DirecTV channel 649-2, and Xfinity channel 1251. Or stream it live on the Bally Sports app. And for real-time Grizzlies news and updates, follow at Grizz on Bally on Twitter. Bally Sports Southeast, home of your Memphis Grizzlies. Looking for the perfect, healthy, and fun party snack for game day? Each Puka Plantain Strip is hand-picked at its peak ripeness, perfectly hand-sliced and full of vitamin A, C, and B6, along with essential minerals magnesium and potassium. Puka Plantain Strips are gluten-free, vegan, and paleo-friendly. Pick up a bag of Puka Plantain Strips today, available now at Super Low Foods. Super Low Foods is a proud partner of the Memphis Grizzlies. Hey, here's your four grilled cheese double burgers. Enjoy your Sonic. So, could you ever over cheese something? Can you over a cheese? No, over not over cheese. Over a cheese. Over a cheese. <laughs> what do you get when you combine two cheesy, craveable classics? The Sonic Grilled Cheese Double Burger. Made with three slices of melty American cheese layered between two 100% pure seasoned beef patties and held together by thick Texas toast. Try one half price when you order in the Sonic app. Exclusion supply. See app for details. Limited time only at participating Sonic drive ins. What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the penalty box. Let's catch you up on a hockey story you may have missed. The Chicago Blackhawks have promoted Megan Hunter to assistant general manager, making her the third woman to currently hold that position and the fourth woman to hold that position in NHL history. Hunter joined the Blackhawks organization in 2016. She spent the past two seasons as a scout and the director of hockey administration in her new role as AGM of hockey operations. Hunter will be in charge of contracts, budgeting, and other departments. She was a star at Wisconsin from 2000 to 2004 and a finalist for the Patty Kazmir Memorial Award as the top college player in the country in 2001. All right, there's more draft stuff to get into, and we're going to talk some about Arch up next on Rising Rock. Socios is the first of its kind in fan influence and rewards. Through the Socios app, you can influence the team you love, connect with other fans, trade, and compete for rewards. Socios.com is the official crypto wallet and trading exchange for some of the biggest sports teams and franchises in the world, like FC Barcelona, Juventus, the UFC, and now they are an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. Download the Socios app wherever you download your apps, create an account, participate, and and win. Taco Bell has all the classic flavors you're craving. Order them ahead on the Taco Bell app for quick pickup in the drive-thru or get them delivered right to your door. Are you a true Taco Bell fan? Join our team and eat for free, plus score flexible hours, scholarships, and more. Apply at jobs.tacobell.com today. Hours and participation may vary by location. Additional terms and fees may apply. Franchisees are independent operators and are responsible for their own employment practices and benefits. Memphis fans can now enhance each moment of their day with the refreshingly luxurious taste of Cintron sparkling flavored energy beverages served exclusively at FedEx Forum. Cintron World is a lifestyle beverage brand inspiring everyone to create their lives with intention, energy, and style. As the official partner of the Grizzlies, Cintron is offering a 10% discount on your next online order when you use promo code GRIZZLIES10 at CintronWorld.com. And follow the lifestyle on social at Cintron World. Drink it, live it. Is 
like we got a chance to see the the emotions of the night for, for Roddy, obviously, and also Kennedy Chandler. What yeah. was it like on the other side in the draft room for you executing three trades on a night like this where a lot of things were, seemed like they were going on across the league? Yeah, I mean, there, there's always, uh, you know, no shortage of, of activity on draft night. You know, for us, it's just identifying the guys that we re really, really want to get in our program and, you know, using the information, you know, that we're, we're trying to collect, try to understand where do we need to get to, you know, to make sure we, we get the guys that we, you know, really want to get. And that, that's what we did. You know, it's a concerted effort and whole front office does an incredible job trying to source information, run through scenarios, figure out, you know, wh where do we go at this point in time? You know, how, how do we, you know, actually try to get these deals done? So um, yeah, appreciative of, of, you know, the whole group's efforts. Uh, leading up to and, and through tonight to be able to go out and make, you know, several, you know, uh, you know, kind of uh, moves around to make sure we got the guys who we really wanted to get here. Things have kind of died down now, but I just kind of want to know what your excitement level is like getting the guys that you all got today coupled with the guys that you already have. Uh, it's incredibly high. I mean, I, I think we got a group of guys that, you know, we certainly have our, our type from a, you know, a character, a mental makeup standpoint. And we, we got a bunch of guys who are, competitive as hell and buy into, uh, you know, I think the style of, you know, we've gotten to know these guys, you know, all of them um, over the course of the pre-draft process. And we feel like we got guys who really are going to fit in, who are going to buy in and who are going to help us, you know, get, get to where we want to in, in the short and long term. Zach, with, with Jake, you moved up to get him yeah. and you trade, you know, 22 and 29. At that point, when you made that trade, yeah. Did you realize you were going to be able to get back at 23 to get David Roddy at that point? And just what enticed you the most about even moving up to get Jake and, you know, trading those two first round picks? Yeah, we, we weren't messing around with Jake. Like we he was like, you know, the guy we felt like we came into the draft who was really an ideal fit with, uh, you know, where we wanted to get to a really difficult, you know, kind of skill set to find. And, you know, we, we did what we you know felt like we had to do to make sure we could we could lock in Jake. The plan was going to be then try to trade back in and get Roddy, you know, specifically. There wasn't going to be another, you know, like we we just felt like, you know, at the end of the day, yeah, you can say, oh, some more positions, you know, things like that. But what we, we're going to invest in, you know, guys who we feel really passionately about, you know, through our, our scouting and evaluation process, you know, those guys, as well as, you know, Kennedy, Vince, um, you know, uh, undrafted two ways who we're not allowed to talk about. You know, th these are guys who we all felt like, you know, really graded out strongly within the things that, that we, you know, value and um, fortunate, uh, you know, that we were able to, you know, come away with, uh, didn't come into the night necessarily expecting we could, uh, you know, acquire all the players we were able to. So excited to come out of it with them. Mark. I'm curious, generally speaking, I think now, except for the John Morant pick, I think now Vince Williams, you have literally traded up for every pick you've made as GM. Great, great trivia with Vince. Yeah, we didn't we didn't trade off. <laughs> um, is there like a, it, just generally speaking, like how did you arrive at that sort of strategy? Was it on you know be, on purpose at the beginning? Is it something you've you know obviously you probably in each draft weren't didn't know you were necessarily going to be able to pull that off? But why do you think it's been effective in the past and just the method to that? You know, it, it philosophically, you know, I think we came into the early drafts of just identifying, you know, who, who are the guys that we feel strongly about and we, we managed to, you know, kind of go and, and be able to acquire them and, you know, kind of seeing, you know, how those guys actually, you know, played out, you know, in reality where, oh, maybe there's even more upside, you know, in some cases that we suspected than we expected. Oh, you know, the, the guys who we might have had, you know, behind them, you know, like, oh, if we if we had just waited, you know, we, we go back, we start, we, we try to do a lot of self-evaluation and say, oh, you know, what, what, you know, if we played it out this way, if we played it out that way in a past draft, how did the board look, you know, all these things. And based on, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, kind of reflecting on that and seeing how it's actually played out with the guys we have gone out to pursue, you know, we, we just feel strongly that the guys who we've really, um, you know, grayed out highly within all of the things that we care about, you know, and that's, that's kind of on court as well as approach, uh, off court, whatever you want to call it. We, we'd rather pursue the guys that we we really really want, and we we feel like we're able to do that again tonight. Any questions? Given that you've had a lot of success drafting, especially in, later in the first round, uh, is there any more pressure uh, to get these picks right uh, based on the fact that 
you, you now have somewhat of a reputation for getting them right we we just you know we want to come in we want to get our guys you know that there's there's always you know there's noise there's this there's that but at the end of the day it's just going through the same process that we have trying to figure out you know who who do we really want to go and, and have joined the memphis grizzlies and i'm really glad we we're able to you know go out tonight and bring in uh you know several guys who we think really fit that mold and that was the rest of Zach Kleiman's press conference from last night. As he started that press conference, he started with talking about um, Summer League. And we'll see all these guys play in Summer League. And we'll add on Zyra Williams. And it was interesting to hear him say they'll play more on ball, just like they did with Desmond Bain the previous year before that. And Xavier Tillman will also be representing the Memphis Grizzlies. And so it should be interesting Summer League. I'm actually really, really excited about to see some of, like, in a way – you know, Zaire and Xavier Tillman, who I now consider like a really a big vet because the way he plays and the way that he is to see, to see yeah. them combined with some of our guys. It's going to be cool. Yeah. And it's like we said, right around the corner, like they had yes. Salt Lake City uh, a week from Monday and then they'll be in Vegas for two weeks mm -hmm. and Summer League Championship. Let's yeah. go. And Grind City Media will have you fully covered. Yes. Jessica will be headed to Salt Lake City to um, take on the first part of Summer League to tell us what's what we should know. And so she'll still be on Rising Grind, don't you worry. Um, and then Kelsey Wright Johnson take the first week in Vegas and I'll head out for the second week in Las Vegas as well. So Grind City Media will have you over the covered place. throughout <laughs> throughout every single thing. We'll have you covered throughout the day as well when we get uh, closer this afternoon. We'll have our press conferences with some of our draft picks and we'll hear more from them. So make sure you stay tuned for Grind to Locked In to GCM on all of our social media platforms. Let's now get into some pop of the morning because we said yesterday one of the biggest things about the NBA draft is that you get a chance to see the fashion come out. And I've already said my favorite person was Neil Ivy. I'm biased, That's I know, fine. but the white suit and the diamond change. Uh, shout out to Giorgio Armani. She she was her and Jay and Ivy were fitted by them. Looked dapper and amazing. Um, but I do think that the biggest one was the number one overall draft pick was Paolo Banquero because of what he wore. The rhinestones were a lot. And if you're following ESPN on their social media platforms where they asked him, like, describe your fit. And I, you, you can tell they're still not used to describing their fit. He's like, well, it's got this suit and some rhinestones all over and I got that's my chain. Does. And that's, and, 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 well, I guess it's like, let the fit speak for itself. You don't really need to describe it very much because it's a lot. Where are these shoes? Do you yeah. know? No, I don't want to know. <laughs> I think if the suit was just purple without the rhinestones, the rhinestones kind of look like, I don't know, some old 80s prom dresses where they were just very out. Like if they were smaller, it yeah. might be a different situation. I just, they're gone. If they were gone, <laughs> it might be a different situation because I like the purple and yeah. purple was a, there were multiple purple suits mm -hmm. last night and I preferred the, the lighter lavender purple. Mm -hmm. Um, one of my favorite was Jeremy Soyan, who went to the San Antonio Spurs. And I loved this color jacket. I love his jewelry. He has the pearls with, like, the mm -hmm. star diamond there, too. And with the black turtleneck underneath. This was probably my favorite look of the night, actually. I like the purple suit. I hated the turtleneck. The turtleneck did not match. Really? The, oh, I liked it's it. It's summertime. Who cares? No. It's weird. I, 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 didn't, I didn't care. If this was, like, a different time, I think the whole entire fit looks great. I didn't care for the turtleneck just because it was a, it was a different different time period maybe because we're like like melting here in memphis tennessee <laughs> i looked at it and i was like i'm melting, melting for you so when i can't when you're nervous it's an too, air-conditioned room well, it there could be Berkeley's. it could be cut off i said maybe it's like cut off sleeves and then maybe that no, no, then I, I don't want but that we, we, we don't know <laughs> maybe it was like, if, if you're getting drafted i'm sweating too but it's i did love the blonde summer. hair i know he changes his hair mm -hmm. color i thought the blonde hair was like a, an amazing choice to match with the lavender um so overall i liked it i just thought like I'm hot for you, so that's that. That's the only thing. Like I'm like, you know, it's hot outside, dude, and it was hot in New York as well. So yeah, that's true. It is. It is indeed summer. Uh, I did like that one. Another one that I really liked was Johnny Davis. He had the J on his suit mm -hmm. for Johnny, but I like I like the suit style. Yeah, the monochrom mon monochromatic look and using like the same color on top of top of the same color. I thought this was very very cool. I have nothing bad to say about it. I thought it was like very very dapper. It was kind of like I'm doing a lot, but I'm not doing a lot. And look at me. I'm not a crazy, like, a colored sunglasses, but I do think it works for him in this situation. Yeah, it matches, and the white shoes were a nice mm -hmm. add-on to that. Okay, one of the most uh, ostentatious looks of the night, we'll call it, Benedict Matherin out of Arizona. Uh, yeah, this is this is a look. It is. It, re it reminds me, like, I feel like I've seen this somewhere. I don't, I don't quite know where. I'm okay with it. 
Like, I don't like the shoes with it. I think the black shoes kind of made it more like a fall winter. I think I would love to see something different with the shoes, but I guess he wants to try to hit the black with the, with the black watch and the black shirt under it. I don't hate it. It was just like very, yeah, I don't, I don't hate it. It just looks like it might be like an old school, like bedspread that, that your grandma had. You yes. remember like that, that, that bedspread? Or a couch. I think we still have a bedspread of that color. So maybe that's why too. Yeah. Uh, and the cross body bag, it's, yeah, those are in right fun. now. It's I know. Crazy. I just got the Lululemon one. Yeah, really. They yeah, were and, and everywhere. we showed up somewhere, and every we were at the Memphis Farmers Market over the weekend, Everyone. and there were four women with the Lululemon. And Chris just looked at me and was like, "How does it feel? How does it feel to be so basic right now?" <laughs> and I was like, "You know what? Actually, it feels convenient because I got all my stuff right, right. here. They got it for the honeymoon because people say like when you're traveling to keep right. all your stuff." Right there. He's got his stuff. My point is, it's draft night. You don't need your stuff right on your chest in this point. You have pockets. You have people. Yeah, it's if it okay. was smaller, it probably was just, it, did, it, it doesn't fit. Like, yeah, for the picture, it probably just need to be like a, it need to be a smaller one if that's what you were trying to do. Most likely, it's probably like some type of deal you had to get paid to do. Yeah. So that's why I was like, oh, you know what? Someone paid him to wear that. Get your, I would put something on big too. Put, get your money. Get your money's worth. I think he's my favorite name of the draft, though. Benedict Matherin. Mm, okay. It's a like strong, it. strong yeah. name with a strong look. I forgot mm -hmm. to send Chet Holmgren. He's not one of my favorite dressed players of the night, but I feel like it was a moment for dear Chet in it what was. he was wearing. He looks as if he's going to be cool. You know? Interesting. <laughs> I do. I really do think so. Like, I, I feel like as if like he's got that swag that you might not understand, but the swag okay. is there. And I actually really like the dice chain. Um, especially when he breaks it down and explains it. So I was like, I was like, oh, okay. He's like, the, the three and the four, it's, it's, it's his number, and three and four adds up to seven. Seven was his number in high school or something like that. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you, like, you know, you got to take that roll at dice on me. So, like, I, I was okay oh, with Shad. He was like, look at he's Jacob like, coming through. And especially through. the way he was sitting when he was doing his interview, he had this, like, little, I'm like, you know what, Chad? I feel as if not only are you going to grow into your body, but you're going to, like, you're going to be someone that I'm like, I think I'm going to like him. I'm intrigued. Yeah. When, when his family walked out, Mm -hmm. One of my favorite parts of the draft that was before the draft was when they had all of the yeah. attendees walk out with their family. And when Chet walked out with his mom and dad, I thought to myself, what an interesting dinner party family guest. Like, I just mm -hmm. want to know more about their life. His dad, the whole story of the fact that he, like, filmed every mm -hmm. single game that he played growing up and continued to be involved in that. Molly Morrison had one of the funniest tweets of the night, though. She said, Chet Holmgren looks like if Tyler Hero and the food critic from Ratatouille had a baby. Mm -hmm. And if you look that. at it. I can totally Uncanny. see that. I've seen Ratatouille too recently, so I can totally see that. Tyler Hero, I do. Yeah, I do. I, I agree with that. I thought the same thing. Like, oh, they kind of like resemble each other. Wait, the food critic or Linguini himself? Because I think he looks like Linguini. No, the food. I think he looks like the on, actual dude you. being controlled by the rat. When you see it, you'll see it. When because you see it, even, you'll see it. When you see it, you'll see it. Even like the like look, because there's a picture of Chet where he's like kind of like hunched over, mm -hmm. and he has the very strong bone structure mm -hmm. of his chin so it kind of matches in that sense okay there's like tyler hero <laughs> there's the food critic from I see it. I see it. <laughs> y'all so mean Chet <laughs> I see it. he's a distinguished so gentleman mean. it's a compliment i see it i see it i know we won't show it <laughs> I saw him. I was like, when you see it, when you show it, then it makes us sound like we're like really mean people. No, I'm rooting for Chet. I want Chet to just go out and prove everybody wrong. Yeah. I want him to put that extra weight on. I want him to be like the unicorn of all yeah. unicorns and just go out there and ball out. Yeah. I The, uh, the other guy I want to see like ball out, I don't know if we have his, I don't know if we have his fit, is uh, Jaden Hardy. He was, mm -hmm. he was in the green room for a very, very long time. And it was to the point where I was just like, oh my gosh. And even Kendrick Perkins kept saying like, you got, I don't know why he's like still here. Like he should have been like picked. But then when he, when he got chosen and his out, his fit was already like a lot. But to hear him do his interview and talk about how like I'm going to prove every team, and he kept saying it, and he kept saying it. And Seth Greenberg was like, enjoy this moment though, like have joy. And he was like, but I'm going to prove out all the teams that like who look past me. I cannot wait to prove them. Everybody was like, yeah, but enjoy. Like where's the tears of joy? He had that like. I can't believe I sat here and you guys like passed me up. But I, I hope I can't wait to. I'm I'm rooting for him because the way that he had that, I was like, I'm rooting for you, dude. Yeah. The um, who was the one with the super cute little brother? Do you know who I'm talking about? Who like I thought he was gonna steal the mic, but he I was great. a lot of brothers coming out. There he is. Oh, yeah, he is. that was the fit. And I was like, didn't like the fit, but the moment I was like, oh god, I want you to, I want you to go be successful because he is not gonna let that one go. Watching a lot of the guys who like who I think uh, not the guys who were like in the stands because I think they knew mm -hmm. they just wanted to be in that moment, but the guys that were in the green room who were, like waiting. I was like, oh, I, this is like one of those. This is one of those times. I'm sure it's like, got to be super, super 
like really hard, but you also want to be there because you you know the projections weren't going where how some people thought they were going. Yes, it yeah. did get a little more like it started so chalk and then yeah. it got more chaotic as the night went on, which kept things interesting at least. But I think that wraps up our draft coverage. It's nine twenty four. What, what do we want to do? Oh. Let's keep going. Oh. Let's keep <laughs> let's keep going. Well, the last thing in pop of the morning because that's our draft coverage for pop of the morning. The last thing in pop of the morning is Taylor Swift dropped her single at midnight. We thought Beyonce was going to drop something. Didn't get anything from Beyonce, but we got new Taylor Switch from, what was the song called now? I can't even remember. Is it Carolina? Carolina. Yeah, Carolina from the, from the movie that's coming out. I listened to it. I'm not, I'm not a crazy fan. It sounds like a movie song. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound like a song that I'm going to listen to on the radio. But to, can you think? New music and all in one week. Beyonce, Taylor Swift. That's a, that's a crazy week of music. Yeah, it's very melancholy. I mm -hmm. listened to like two minutes of it five minutes ago and that's all i can mm. take away from it is that it feels like it fits it's for uh where the crawdads saying a yeah. book being turned into a movie highly anticipated this summer very intrigued by it it fits the tone of that perfectly am i gonna listen to it to I, actually today's kind of a melancholy day so like maybe i will but uh i wouldn't just have it on as like a, a summer melancholy bop. day yeah there is yeah oh, okay yeah just, it just turned. I was having a great day, actually. Mm. Great mood. Everything was good. The Grizzlies draft picks, but we just got some Supreme Court news. So yeah. let's uh, hustle up, or let's do, do we have anything in double tap before we get we out of here? We do. We do. We yes. talked about it a little bit earlier with Lang Whitaker, but it was like just even more from the moment from Jade and Ivy when he sat down on the couch with Monica McNutt and his mom. Jade and Ivy, like, just, just overwhelmed with a lot of emotions after he was picked. Take a listen. This is everything, man. I, I work... <laughs> day in and day out to just get to this level and you know I, I know I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her and I'm just I'm just I'm just so happy I'm just so happy Neil I'm, I'm not gonna lie I thought you would be the one crying <laughs> but you are stoic but as you look at your baby achieve his dreams and know how much of an impact you had in the example that you set what's this like for you I I'm speechless almost you know like this is his dream come true um, you know, to be in Detroit, we have so many amazing roots in Detroit. To be able, for him to, you know, be able to walk on the, that stage, and I'm just so joyful. I'm so happy for him. So I'm just taking it all in, soaking it all in. Mm, it was such. It was very, very beautiful yeah. to see that, and like I just can't wait to hear more from Jade and Ivy um, as he does his Pistons press conference, and can't wait to hear more from Neil Ivy as well. And normalize just letting people cry. Period. Like. That's emotion. That's yeah. Lang touched on it. Like all the work, everything culminates in that moment. And sometimes you just start to cry. Right. And you cry so much, it's hard to talk. Guess what? It's happened to every single person in this world. Right. Congratulations to him. And because like everyone. a lot of people, even Jay Bill has said, Jaden Ivey is the best player in the draft. Yeah. Like the best player in, player in the draft. And I can't wait to see him shine. And for a lot of these guys, we know what the draft means. Like your lives change. And like to think about like the NBA and like how many people are selected and just to like say that. You were one of those, especially when you're a lottery pick as well. But to be like one of the 58, you know, guys selected, it's not like the NFL where you have like so many guys who are drafted. To have that moment, and a lot of people hope and wish and dream to get there. Like that is something special that, like, for your family, for your friends, you will never forget. And yes, now the work will begin. And now this, this just starts up like a whole new chapter of a dream. But a lot of these guys are like 19 to 22 years old. They're young, and to see everything they worked up, worked for in like a short period of time. It's a beautiful thing, and that was that hands down like the one one of the best moments. Like, there was a lot, there was a lot of special moments, moments, but that one that one hits like deep for us all in the city of Memphis. I can't wait to see her watch him at games. I know. Do you, is she like a courtside mom or a box mom? <sighs> I think she's a box mom. I think she's a box mom. Watching her son, that's how she is even in college and in Purdue. She's like a she's a box mom, but she is like I've I've watched her. She's an intense yeah. like watching the game of basketball. She said courtside for the Grizzlies with Jade and Ivy, you know, um, during the playoffs, and, like, and that was right. cool to see. So uh, I think she's a courtside mom. She doesn't like a lot of attention, but she's gonna get it because <laughs> she's Neil Ivy. You're always gonna get that attention. She's Neil, Neil Ivy. Uh, really quickly, let's give a shout out to the Marching 100 Louis yeah. Vuitton. Their uh, fashion show was yesterday, and Marching 100, Florida A&M's band performed. And that was just like an epic, epic thing to see. Kendrick Lamar performed as well. They gave an amazing tribute to Virgil. Um, but for the for the men's line, it was great to see them perform in pairs. Like, like what? Is, what? I just love this. I just love it, it all. Like, mm -hmm. like, just the aesthetics of this video with, like, the yellow. Yes. I don't, I don't know where this is in Paris. 
but it looks so cool. <laughs> that's like that's something that these kids will never ever forget. And like a seeing HBCU band, like one hour, you know, HBCUs do it better in all assets and all facets of the world, um, but also in the band world, marching band. But to see them like have that platform, to see have them have that moment, because I'm sure like this is a fashion show. Where you get people from around the world yeah. and across the globe who are probably figuring out what HBCU even means and also figuring out where Florida A&M is. Um, to see that like. It's just amazing. Um, casually, uh, it's at the Louvre. <laughs> it's just, it's just the Louvre. I've never been there. At. I've never even been to Paris. <laughs> I, just, so. I saw the Louis Vuitton tweet on it. Mm-hmm. Um, but just the the whole purpose of, of this collection is to be united by the belief that imagination can heal, regenerate, and uplift. That's dope. Love it. Let's hustle up and get out of here. What we are watching tonight and <sighs> this weekend: Will the Colorado Avalanche win the Stanley Cup? Uh huh tonight yeah will they knock it out yeah you said yeah they will yes i, said, yes, I don't know I'm, I my pick they, is still the lightning yeah. but at this point it's gonna be real, real hard <laughs> it's gonna be really really hard you're down three one i think regardless if lightning win tonight i do think that avalanche will probably was are gonna win it all i want them to win point. it on their home ice mm-hmm. to have the full experience we'll see how it goes it actually is it's a fun sports weekend between that and then College World Series is this weekend mm-hmm. Ole Miss is in it which That's kind true. of defied all odds they'll play Oklahoma uh the Two games are Saturday, Sunday. If they need a third, it's played mm-hmm. Monday. And then, what else did I see? Uh, the Giannis Antetokounmpo movie. Disney Plus movie comes out. And Elvis comes out today. The Elvis, Elvis Presley movie out. comes out as well today. So was like, you, you got a lot of things to watch. And big shout out to Ole Miss because they had one of the hardest roads to get to the College World Series. They were the, one of the last four in. And I really thought Arkansas was their moment because they were, it was supposed to be their moment last year. And I said, okay, maybe this is a time for like the, the next, like this is, they'll make up for it. But to get a shutout and um, shout out to the Ole Miss pitcher who like the first SEC pitcher to throw a shutout, I think since like the 1993 so shout out to them and so congrats to Ole Miss Oklahoma's gonna be a tough road I don't have a pick though I'll think on it watch it yeah see how it goes (laughs) enjoy and uh, maybe have a uh, there was something with jello shots that I never looked into (laughs) did you see that no oh they were like calculating which fan base was taking the most jello shots during the college world series Arkansas was really like leading the charge for quite some time and so now they have to continue onward. So we'll okay. find out who has the most jello shots. And everybody else, have a good weekend. Right, right. And then also, I'm, I'm going to TSC this weekend. So going I back to my alma head mater. coach, Megan gonna... Triplett. <laughs> I'm going to be a coach. Are you I mean, excited? Coach. Do you have a strategy? Uh, you know, I haven't thought that far. I it? was thinking about that at the draft. I was like, man, this is like, this is like one of those moments I should be like taking a lot, a lot in as I was listening to a lot of the, you know, the analysts. And I was like, oh man, this is going to be me trying to figure out how I'm going to make all these celebrities work. So TSU is having their celebrity basketball weekend first ever, raising money for the TSU um, athletic department. Penny Hardaway will be there. He'll be playing. Darius Garland will make an appearance. Rob, Rob Covington will be there as well. Um, so we're all coming together, and I'm coached. I, I'm a little upset that I wasn't asked to play, but I am following in my mom's footsteps, and I'm going to become Coach Triplet for the day. And I'm going. I'm coaching with one of my really good friends too. So um, it'll be interesting. Okay. Well, we're hoping that we're reporting on a win. Yeah, me too. On Monday and whatever I might say and do. I would like some. I don't just want images. I want video. Okay. I want like video clips of you coaching. Okay. So we can see your style and, and I'm figure have that it face out. Like, do you have hmm. a get back? A get back coach in case you get mad. Can your mom come? Can my she mom can come? No, she probably she get, might she take no. over. No, because she's aggressive. I am more like uh, I don't, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing yet. Can't, yeah, but just fake it till you make it. I'm, you know, I should I should really focus in and become Jennifer Triplett. I should I become so. Coach Triplett in this moment. You're right. It's in your blood. I'm the head coach. Rob is the assistant coach. I'm gonna put that out there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Mm-hmm. Make sure everybody knows. Uh, we will see everyone back here on Monday. I hope everyone has a great weekend. We'll see you then. This has been Rise and Grind with Jessica and Megan. Tune in live daily at 8 a.m. or on demand by heading to GrindCityMedia.com or GrindCityMedia on YouTube.